Hey yo, what's poppin' guys? It's your boy Fizzle the Hizzle, aka Ben here. Bringing you guys the Tampa Bay Buizels WPL Season 7 Season Recap. Um, your Tampa Bay Buizels uh, just finished the WPL as you have known. Um, my final battle against Chess went up last week on my channel, so definitely go check that out. It was a definitely a good one. But uh, yeah man, it was, <laughs> it was an interesting season after all, and a lot of good memes, a lot of good times, and a lot of bad times. Mostly a lot of bad times, but nevertheless, I had, I had, a, I had a nice amount of fun in this league, and uh, really solid people. Um, Got to shout out my boy Sohan for running the league. Um, I really enjoyed my time here, even though my record wasn't that fantastic. Uh, thank you for commissioning. Um, I know it's pretty stressful running a league, bro. Um, I'm recent. I'm um, right now. I'm starting up my SSBL, the Soul Silver Battle League, um, that I'm running myself. The order has been revealed for the draft, and all the rosters has been have been revealed. So I'm really excited about that and trying to take on being a commissioner for the first time ever. And no, I don't believe that I'm going to be uploading that league. Maybe I will in the future, maybe? But as of right now, there is no plans to ever do that. But uh, yeah, man, your Buizels are 3 and 9, minus 11, 12 overall in total in the entire league. Uh, we did meet that 3 win uh, goal <laughs> at the end of the season. Um, at around like week six or whatever, I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna try to get w uh, three wins. Um, of course, I'm gonna try for playoffs, but I'm gonna at least get three wins. And I did eventually get it against Chess last week. Uh, spoiler alert. So I did get it, but in the final week, um, I could have went like positive, honestly. I could have went like six and six or beyond, but unfortunately, you already know what the win con is, boys. But uh, yeah, man, 12th overall isn't that bad. Our differential isn't garbage, actually. Um, it was kind of an interesting season because the first week uh, we got bodied by Sohan because I had no lore on Swampert, so that really sucked. And um, yeah, that it just gave me bad juju for the rest of the league. And unfortunately, this is the worst record I've ever had, and it's also my first record ever below 500. So like below six and six or whatever. It's my first record ever below that. So um, that's pretty crazy to think about. But I was gonna have a bad season eventually, right? Uh, and I'm not even that good. I still have lots to learn. And this league definitely taught me um, how to build better and how to play in-game better. I feel like I've drastically improved my in-game play um, as of late um, and outside of like non-upload leagues that I'm uploading. So yeah, and all the other leagues that I'm not uploading, I'm already above 500 in all of them except for CPBA. I'm like four and five because I got hacked a couple times. But uh, yeah, other than that, I'm doing really well in my uh, non-upload leagues, but yeah, man, outside of that, I'm not happy with our uh, record at all. But, uh, you know, it's a game we play, and um, we could have had a better record, but it's on me for not prepping and drafting a better team. Um, I'm not going to I'm not gonna blame it on the draft, the entire draft, of course. But uh, it def there were definitely some key things that I did not like. Um, let me rant about it real quick. I didn't really have a lot of good defense, right? Um, I had to rely on Aromatis for, like, wish passing. Which isn't that good because Aromatisse had some really bad matchups um, in this league because there are so many steel types that just body it like Bisharp. <laughs> uh, like Bisharp. And um, it just had a really bad matchup. And um, yeah, and also relying on my two grounds for rocks, Gligar and Swampert. They're not the best walls and they don't have any recovery except for Gligar, but you can take advantage of Gligar's. Um, it's pretty passive in the fact that it doesn't hit hard at all, even though it does get U-turn. Usually can't fit U-turn on a set like Gligar's. Um, whoops, my bad. And um, yeah, I just didn't like my defensive backbone that much. I know that's crazy to think, to think about because I have self steal on my two grounds and my uh, my Aromatis, but I just didn't like it. I had tremendous offense with things like Hydreigon, Greninja, uh, Metacham, Lycanroc. Those four uh, were key in like breaking other people's teams apart. Uh, Dark Spam did come in clutch. They're probably my two best mons in the entire draft. But uh, yeah, man. In case you've never seen one of these videos, on it's too late to talk about this. But uh, if you've never seen one of these season recaps, um, what I do is go over each member of my team, go over their stats, um, and I tell you if I'm gonna plan to draft it again or not, and talk about its performance as a whole. And you already heard the bit where I talk about my season as a whole, so definitely time to talk about my draft. Um, let's just jump right into it. Um, first up, we have the first round pick, Celestila. Seven games, seven kills, eight deaths. One of our Z users. Um, it's a good mod. Um, I enjoyed using it in DCDL and now this league. 
Um, I felt like I used it pretty well. Um, seven kills, eight deaths is not fantastic at all. Um, wait, how did I get eight deaths in seven games? I don't know. Um, let's say it was eight games and eight deaths, or seven games and seven deaths. By the way, all these stats are just me counting, um, going through every replay and counting, so definitely show some love on that like button for that effort, um, like always. <laughs> so stats may be off, so I'm, I'm sorry for that. Um, usually I did, I did pass the first grade, so I can count, I can confirm. But uh, yeah, man, I, I didn't use this to the best of its abilities. I felt like I used it pretty well. I'm a pretty good cell stealer user, I'd like to say, but um, it was forced to be like more utility based, like leech seed, um, toxic, protect, whatever. I couldn't run a lot of offensive sets, or um, some of them didn't have the matchup. But I did run a lot of offensive sets actually, so disregard all of that. But I did run a lot of offensive sets, but that made it so that my defensive backbone was like pretty weak. Um, so I had like Swamper as my only like wall, quote unquote, and like Aroma Tease. So making this thing offensive made my uh, defensive backbone like non existent on my draft, and it was really easy to prep for. But uh, offensive cells still did put in the work a couple times. And uh, I would definitely drop this thing again. It's one of the best mods in the format, of course, and it was my Z user, so I'd definitely be willing to use this again in the future. And um, I don't know how, how soon that's gonna be. Um, I don't think I'm gonna draft it for a while now because I just wanna try new things at this point. But I tried like every tier one there is, except for like, I don't know, Infernape and Cartana, I guess. Uh, and Coco, I wanna try Coco again. I've used it before, but I wanna use it again. But uh, yeah, it's a good mon, and I'd be willing to use it again for sure. Next up, we had our second pick in the draft. A little early, but um, again, I have eight games and nine deaths, and it does get eight kills. I don't know what kind of wax stats these are, eight games and nine deaths, but uh, I'm sorry. I, I, can, I can count. <clears throat> but this is our Super Z user. Um, the reason I made this like a Super Z user was at some point in the season, I was thinking about running like Z Sunny Day, Z Rain Dance, but uh, it never happened, and it just had not just never had a good matchup ever um yeah this was this was a really good mon early on like there were two monsters in my season like the early half was hydreigon it put in a lot of work and then the second half was greninja uh, which was the mvp of the team in my opinion but uh yeah hydreigon put in work um spec sets life orb sets um they were all really good and they performed really well it did its job um unfortunately it did not get to shine on my draft because of my record, it was very unfortunate. But uh, it, I, I did come through a couple of times. Like Specs, Hydreigon ran through Storms' this team, but he made a couple good plays at the very end that sealed him the deal. And same thing with Spanik, I believe. Yeah, Spanik. Um, he did end up beating me, even though Hydreigon did put in the work in that game. So yeah, like Specs, Hydreigon, his dual stab is incredible, and I'd be 100% willing to use this again. It's just that speed tier 98 is not that crazy um if it was like base 101 i think that it would be a phenomenal pokemon but uh 98 isn't that good because most teams have like a base 100 right and uh they're usually gonna creep hydreigon but at least you force them to creep hydreigon right like a mew um if i guess mew didn't i guess chess didn't run like defensive or offensive mew because he would have done that but uh yeah that that was the thing hydreigon is a very good mod and i'd be willing to use it again for sure Next up, we had Medicham, nine games, seven kills, and eight deaths. Um, I, I wasn't a good Medicham user. I don't know what it was. It's just, it's not for me, man. Um, I think it's a great Pokemon, nevertheless. I hate prepping for Medicham, and it seems like everybody else is a way better Medicham user than I am. I don't know what I did wrong. Um, like, I never used, like, a bulk up. Actually, I did use a bulk up set a couple times, I think. But uh, I don't know what I did wrong, man. Um, it's just there to be a breaker. I think the one thing I did, it was just sack it for no reason. Like, I sacked it to a Latias against a Dom. I sacked it to the Hariyama for no reason ever. It just no reason I, I just sacked it. And that kind of costed cost the game for me. Um, I did not miss any high jump kicks throughout the season, though, which is phenomenal. And I'm really happy about that. But uh, 7 kills, 8 deaths is not the worst ever. And um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the mod in general. I don't think it's a great mod. I just didn't use it well. I don't know what I was doing wrong. Uh, maybe it's because I'm bad, but <laughs> I don't know. Um, it just, it fits on my draft because like Dark Spam plus Metacham is like really good. But um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I definitely try to use this again. 
maybe in a better draft. Um, I know that's kind of weird saying this for me because I had a web speed pass in Medi, and it. I think like just because of that, everybody overhyped my draft, and I was like, oh gosh, I better win games now. And then I went three and nine, which is not fun. So it was a lot of pressure on my team. I feel like we were like number five in the power rankings post draft. So I set, I definitely set high expectations for myself. Um, I really wanted to go far in this league, but unfortunately it did not happen. And these three picks I felt like alone were like phenomenal, one of the best in the league. But um, un unfortunately the, my performance did not live up to that. So yeah, I definitely dropped this thing again for sure. Next up we had the MVP of the team. Zemu Greninja, eight games, 13 kills and five deaths. 13 kills was incredible because we got like five kills against Chess or something like that. Um, and it really came through the second half of the season. It got me the three wins. Which is really good. Specs Greninja is incredible. Life Orb Greninja is incredible. Um, like Sash lead with Taunt, Spikes, T-Spikes, U-Turn is incredible. Greninja is a really versatile mod. Um, even though it has like, you usually see it like very linear on uh, ladder. Well, I guess not ladder because you do see like the lead sets with like T-Spikes and whatever. And um, I'm, I'm so unhappy that Protean is not allowed. But uh, Protean Gwen is just broken in draft format in my opinion because you can't prep for it ever. And um, yeah, I feel like it's a really good mod. I used it definitely more offensively here. Um, I didn't really use T-Spikes that much or Spikes because I had a Skullipede in the back anyway, um, which was, I used that a couple times for those hazards. But uh, Greninja put in work offensively, man. It, it's the MVP of my team for sure. Eight games, 13 kills and five deaths is not bad at all. 13 kills is the highest in our uh, team. And I don't know. Uh, where it stands in the entire league it could be like top 20 i think it's probably top 20 because 13 kills is a lot relatively um well at least in my draft but um yeah did definitely put in work i'd be willing to use this again but i use greninja a couple times now and um <clears throat> i'd be willing to try something new maybe another water like a milotic or something i don't know i know it's not there are two completely different mods but um greninja is a great mod it fits on like every draft and if you need some t some form of utility and offense this is a pokemon for you I'm a firm advocate for Greninja being one of my favorite draft league Pokemon, even though I hate it as a Pokemon. Um, I don't know, it's kind of a meme at this point, but I love Greninja in draft format. I think it's phenomenal, and it has a big rise in popularity nowadays. And for sure, I'd draft this thing again, but maybe not soon. Um, next up, we have the Aromatisse. <coughs> Excuse me, round five Aromatisse. Um, at this point, I really needed a fairy uh, with Celesteela. And if Aromatisse got taken, I'd have to rely on like something like, I don't know, Togetic or whatever. <laughs> but uh, Aromatisse, I got around five. It didn't do anything, man. Um, it was really underwhelming. I didn't get to use any of those nasty plot calm. Well, I did use calm mind, but I didn't get to use any of those nasty plot trick room sets. I did bring nasty plot once. It seemed phenomenal on paper, but unfortunately I got hacked to death. So yeah, Aromatisse didn't really uh, perform as a wall because in five games it died all five times. And got one kill from that Moonblast against Shaman, so thank you, Ryan, for that, um, giving me that kill. Every team, or every member on my team got at least one kill, except for Lee Vanny, which, which I don't really care about Lee Vanny, kind of sucked. But, uh, yeah, Aromatisse is very interesting. Um, it, it's just a budget fairy, man. I don't like budget fairies. Um, things like, Gramble is not bad, but, like, things like Aromatisse and stuff, I'm not a fan of. I'd rather get an early fairy to pair, especially with the Celesteela. I need a very good fairy, um, like a Florgis or a Sylveon or Clefable. Um, Clefable Celesteela sounds nasty, but uh, yeah, I just need to know. This was just a budget fairy, and it can't, it showed uh, the entire season. It didn't perform well at all, and I wasn't happy with its performance. So in the future, I'm not going to be drafting Aromatisse. Um, I'd rather get an early fairy if I'm going to get a really good steel type like Celesteela or like Kartana or whatever. I don't know. But I'm going to get an early fairy next in the future seasons. So yeah, I don't, I'm, that's the plan, drafting this thing going forward. Next up, we had Scolipede. Okay, I'm learning from my mistakes here. Anytime I'm drafting Scolipede in the future, it's going to be my Zemon. I don't care about what else is on my team. I need Scolipede to be a Z-move user. There were so many instances in building where I could be like, all right, plus two Z Megahorn bodies this dude, or Z Aquatail, or Z Earthquake man. So many instances where I said that in building within my front office, but uh, unfortunately it was not my Z-move user. 
and it really bite me, bit me in the butt, um, and it really showed in its stats. Three kills, seven deaths is not good at all. Um, if it had Z moves, it would be so good. But unfortunately, I opted to go for the Celesteela, Hydreigon, and Greninja, which are not bad Z moves, Z move users. But Skullpeed, I feel like it needs to be a Z move user if I want it to be a good threat, uh, like a better threat than it already was. But uh, Skullpeed, I think, is such a good mod, man. Um, even though it didn't perform well. Um, in build, I think it was really versatile with uh, two layers of spikes, or two different kinds of spikes rather. Um, SD speed boost just runs through teams, man, especially with the Z move. Uh, with Z moves, this thing is just pretty broke. Uh, well, it's not broken, but it's a really good mod. And can just run through entire drafts with the Z move. So, yeah, going forward with this thing, I definitely draft this thing again, man. If I need a spiker and a T spiker, something fast out of four scarfers, and um, just set up and spam moves like Mega Horn. This is definitely the mod for you and for me. So I'm definitely gonna look to draft this thing again. And it's gonna be fun in the future, especially with Z moves. So for sure I draft it again. Next up we have Lycanroc. Um, second in kills on our team. Seven games, eight kills, six deaths. This thing put in a decent amount of work. Like banded Lycanroc with Excel Rock really is good at revenging and it has really good synergy with Mega, Medicham, and Greninja. Just to pick off those threats that are left at like nine HP or whatever. And um those fire types, those very strong fire typing break fire type breakers like Volcarona, Zardag, Zardwai, uh, Blacephalon, those things are terrifying, man. And especially now in Gen 7 where there are loads of them. Uh, I really needed Lycanroc, and Lycanroc is a good mod for that. And if you need like some sort of priority in the future, um, Lycanroc is just a really good mod, especially like banded life orb. I ran SD once, it can really break teams apart, man. If it got Ice Fang to break those bulky grounds. That would have been really good, but it was paired with my Greninja, which was, um, it has really good synergy because it breaks the grounds that the Lycanroc has trouble dealing with, and it has phenomenal coverage. It basically has Edgequake because it has Stone Edge and Drill Run, which gets boosted by Tough Claws, so it's basically Earthquake. Um, so yeah, it's a really good amount. Life Orb Bandit sets are really good, and I really enjoyed using this thing. I used this thing before, I believe. Um, it, was, it, it ripped out pretty well. And I'd be willing to use it again, not anytime soon because I used it before and now I'm trying new things. Um, but yeah, I definitely use it again in the future, and it's a really solid amount in my opinion. Next up, we had Gligar, six games, one kill, five deaths. This this thing was very interesting, right? Because statistically, it didn't perform well, but um, I felt like it was just way too passive. I was just telling myself it's not going to be passive. It's not going to be passive. But 75 base attack or 85 base attack, I don't remember what it was. Um, it's probably 75, I think. 75 stab EQs aren't going to do anything, especially if you're investing like in all HP and special defense or defense or whatever. It just doesn't hit hard at all. And U-turn is so hard to fit on Gligar, man. You need like rocks or defog, toxic, loost, earthquake. You can't really fit U-turn on this thing, man. So I keep telling myself it's not going to be passive. But it's pretty passive, man. Even with the um, option to run the Swords Dance and U-turn. You just can't fit it on any of these mods, man. And especially since it's my, uh, uh, well, second viable rocker. D Lycanroc, I guess, could be a rocker with, like, a sash lead. But, um, Glycar is just, I don't know. I couldn't fit any moves on it because I was kind of forced to run rocks if it did come. And, um, it was definitely a problem in prep. It didn't really have good matchups anyways. Um, it was really good to handle some physical attackers. But sometimes it just didn't do anything at all and... Yeah, man, that kind of sucked, but Gligar is a decent mod. I don't think I'd want to draft Gligar again, just because it's so passive, um, and it's so hard to fit moves on it, man. Like, you can't run any of the sets you want to on this thing, like the SD sets like I'm talking about, and it's some really nice utility with agility baton pass and stuff. You just can never fit those on, especially that you have the item limit, um, because it's forced to run Eviolite, basically. Um, you, I guess you can run, like, Yachi or Life Orb, I guess, but... Those are kind of unsets, um, Yachi not, uh, Yachi less so, but Evil Light really hinders its ability to do anything other than defensively pivot, so it's really hard to use, and yeah, that's my standing on it. Next up, we have Swampert, um, our second ground type and our second, uh, viable rocker besides Lycanroc. Eight games, two kills, eight deaths, it just died every single time, um, it just gets up rocks and dies, which is basically what I need it for. Um, I don't really need it to check anything per se. It's really good roar mon. Um, you couldn't tell that from my week one performance, but yeah, Swamper is pretty nice because it has one of the best defensive typings in the game easily, one of the best. 
So after like steel flying, steel fairy, stuff like that. Um, it's a very good typing, and you get up rocks, hits pretty hard with like banded sets, I guess, and life orb. Coverage on both sides is really nice. Scald Earthquake is a great combination on any mon, but uh, Swamper is it, it underperformed. Um, I feel like it, I didn't get to run any of the offensive sets that I wanted because it was one of my two viable rockers, so I couldn't fit anything on it. Um, similar, I have Mammoth Swine in another league, and it's one of two rockers on my entire draft, along with Reggie Rock, the GOAT. But uh, yeah, it's forced to run rocks every week, and I can't really run like an extra move like um, Super Power or whatever, um, even like Freeze Dry. It's for always forced to run rocks if Red Rock doesn't come, and if it does, ha if it does have a bad matchup, even though it never has bad matchups because it's a god. But uh, yeah, similar to Swampert here, it was forced to run rocks every week, and I was forced to lead it every single week. And you can really telegraph that really well, like uh, Ryan did in our battle, except he had no grass moves on his Shaman, so. Um, I've never seen a Swampert uh, wall a grass type in my life, but that was a good instance of where it happened. But uh, it's a decent mon. I'd rather get another ground. I want to try Sagma to it as well. It seems like a really good mon. And at this point, I have no ice resist except Greninja, and that was a problem. My water, um, my bulky water rather, is neutral to ice. That wasn't very good. But fortunately, it didn't really like end up mattering in the long run because. Nobody really could spam ice moves against me. I believe Kieran Black. I never played Kieran Black, I don't think. Uh, maybe I did, I don't remember. But um, yeah, like ice spam wasn't that common against me. And it didn't really seem that popular in matchups. So it didn't really end up affecting me at all. But in the future, yeah, I'm just going to get a bulky water that's like n not neutral to ground. Or not neutral to ice, rather. Um, even though I said Sagnatoid before, it seems like a cool mon. But yeah, you always want a bulky water as Greninja, and this is what it gave me. So yeah. That's my standing on it. Next up, we got Cryogon. I loved Cryogon, man. It didn't put any work, um, but Spideff tank sets were phenomenal. Um, the stats don't show how great it was. Just to be a nuisance to any special attacker, um, they were forced. Um, I remember Dom's Nido Queen was forced to run physical, which isn't a bad thing because it does have a higher physical attack, but it loses off on the sheer force boost with Earthquake. And um, Cryogon is a great mod, man. Uh, Freeze Dry, I think, is invaluable in a draft. It gets Spin and Defog as well, which is really nice. So much utility, reliable recovery. I'm a huge fan of Cryo, man. And it's our Ice Resist on the special side. But if anything gets like Iron Fist Ice Punch, it's, this is not a switch in. Even though it's an Ice Resist. It's not an Ice Resist on the physical side, let's say. But uh, 4 games, 1 kill, 4 death. It, it did kill the Nido Queen, uh, Dom's Nido Queen, which is really nice. I It got its only kill in that game. But I think it did put in work, and the stats don't show it. Um, it, it was just a really good special pivot. I had my physical um, monster in Gligar. Um, it's very fat on both sides. And reliable recovery on this thing is really good. Really good synergy with Gligar. And I really liked it. And I definitely drafted it again in the future. But um, yeah, I just need like a better water to resist physical ice type moves. If I do end up getting Cryogonal. Because this thing isn't taking like an ice claw. Ice claw. That's a new move. I made it up. So, yeah, that's the thing. Lee Vanny, it's the only member on my team that did not get any kills. Two games, two deaths. It just got up webs and died. Um, and in the future, it the, the all the webs got defogged in like five turns. So this thing kind of sucked. Uh, webs and Medi didn't do anything this season. Like, all the webs were defogged within five turns of getting them up. So that kind of sucked. And um, I didn't get to use any of the cool sets I were talking about in the draft analysis. Like, the agility sword says baton pass set is broken. Well, I didn't say it was broken, but you already know what I mean. And uh, Lee Vanny kind of underperformed. It didn't really do anything. Webs kind of sucked against teams with good defoggers. Because if you see webs, you're always going to bring removal, right? Unless your name is Adam and you instead decide to bring two Scarfers. <laughs> instead of your only defogger. Which, I guess, it worked out for him because he won the game. Uh, not without a little sprinkle of hacks, of course. But, uh, yeah, man. Um, Lee Vanny didn't really do anything this season. And it kind of sucked. And, uh, yeah, man, that's my, that's my draft as a whole. I don't, I'm not, I'm never going to draft Lee Vanna again. It kind of sucks. I, I get another Weber, like, area dose with T-Spikes or whatever. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, even Swadloon. Because uh, Swadloon Tran is a great core. Swadloon Heatran. Um, you can't beat it. But, yeah, those were the thoughts on my draft. Um, all in all, I, I, I had some fun, I suppose. Um, battling, prepping was pretty fun get with my team. But I'm honestly glad to get it over with. I really needed to get the season out of the way so I can perform better in the future seasons. 
um, not necessarily this season, but in my non-upload leagues. <coughs> and um, sorry about that. And um, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to get the season over with. And this is the final video of the WPL. In regards to season eight of the WPL, I'm not sure if I'm going to join. Um, I said earlier on that I did, I was looking forward to rejoining next season. But at this point, I'm on the edge of whether I want to join or not, because right now, um, I think I'm going to do an update video, so you can catch everything there on my uh, availability of, or my plans for future upload leagues. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my draft. Um, sorry that you guys had to deal with my disappointing performance. Um, I definitely was salty. I'm sorry about that. You guys saw a whole nother side of me, if you don't know me from Discord or whatever. Well, I try not to be salty, but of course I get salty. Um, salt is in the air, of course, and uh, I'm sorry about that if I made any of you guys like disappointed in me or whatever because of the salt. But you know what? It's Pokemon, dude. Like I'm like I'm I'm gonna be mad about it for like ten minutes, ten minutes, and then I don't care anymore. It's Pokemon. I don't care. But uh, yeah, definitely disappointed in my performance. But you know what? Three and nine is not two and ten, which is all that matters. No double digit losses for me. So uh, yeah, man. I'm thank you guys so much for watching this incredible journey. Um, it means the world to me, and like always, have a swell day. Peace.